happy Monday and welcome back, friends, to the Mark Claire Show. Every single Monday, I'm coming at you with a great conversation and a hell of a one today, if I do say so myself. It's really the coming together of a couple of my life interests, talking about occult symbolism, conspiracy, and pro wrestling, all wrapped up in one nice little bundle with my man, Billy Ray Valentine. Before that, what do I smell? What do I smell? Oh, my God. It's this bag of Fox and Sons coffee so conveniently placed at my desk here. Why? Because it inspires me and it reminds me to record this ad for you about Fox and Sons coffee from my man, Stephen Fox. I have mentioned this before, but maybe you're new to the show. In, in which case, you need to know that Stephen Fox started this company not just to relive the moments of sharing coffee with his father, but also to teach his sons about entrepreneurship. Hence, the Fox and the Sons right there. So I want you to head over to foxandsons.com because I keep smelling it. You know why? Because it smells so freaking good. This is my jam right here, the Den Blend Dark, but there is a bean for everybody. So I want you to head over to foxandsons.com, F-O-X-N-S-O-N-S.com. Get yourself an 18% discount. How do you do that? By using my promo code, my exclusive promo code, M-C-S. You know why you got 18%? Not just 15% like a lot of those other podcasts out there because I hit the boardroom. I negotiated for you guys because the fact is Fox and Sons got a great response from my audience. And that's why they're still sponsors after six or seven months here now. So I want to encourage you, if you haven't yet, follow along. Play in the home game with the rest of the Mark Claire Show audience. Check out Fox and Sons. Treat yourself to 18% off a bag. And once you do that, I know you're going to. You are going to. You're going to want the two pound bag delivered to your door every single month. And right now, Stephen Fox is offering you $4 off per bag off what it was already an incredible deal. So check it out. Foxandsons.com. That being said, it is time now for my conversation with Billy Ray Valentine. My guest today is a conspiracy analyst and a pro wrestling analyst. And uh, longtime listeners will know that this is the perfect juxtaposition of my own interests. He is the host of the Infinite Fringe podcast, uh, as well as I believe the soon to be relaunched PW Hustle. I'm very pleased to welcome Billy Ray Valentine. Billy, welcome to my show. What is up, buddy? How you doing? Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Honored to be here. Looking forward to having this conversation with what seems to be a kindred spirit. Yes, wrestling indeed. and conspiracy. Yes. Right? And I always say that if you came up in professional wrestling, right, if, if you know what's going on in professional wrestling, it's very easy to start decoding what's going on in the political world because it's the same thing, more or less. But anyway, go ahead. Oh, you're absolutely right. Well, that, that's kind of where I want to start is a, a little bit of with your own wrestling fanhood or your conspiracy interest, wherever they might have uh, first met each other. But feel free to pick it up wherever you want. Uh, I'm, I'm really personally curious just about when you first got inv- interested in pro wrestling and like who what you were into as a kid growing up. Man, uh, um, my my mom used to work late, like really late. And uh, my aunt was living with us at the time and she was a pro wrestling fan. You know, she would just watch it in Spanish, right? She would watch it in Spanish. And uh, she would allow me to run rough shot throughout the house and do whatever the hell I wanted to do as a little kid. And uh, she let me stay up until my mom got home. My mom would get really upset at her. But she let me stay up and I would watch wrestling with her. And that's how it started. But what captured me, my earliest memory, not that I saw the match, but at this time in 1984, they kept re- playing the footage of the birth of Hulkamania, right? So when Hogan beat Rest in Peace, the Iron Sheik for the WWF title, that was it. That's my earliest uh, um, uh, recollection of a professional wrestling match or, or anything having to do with professional wrestling. And I was hooked with Hulk Hogan. He's still probably my favorite wrestler of all time. Like I, I am a Hulk Hogan mark to this day, you know? So um, yeah, that's how I started watching the WWF religiously. And eventually, as, as I got a little bit older, uh, you know, I, I became aware of, of, of different wrestling organizations throughout the country. We didn't get a lot of uh, NWA, WCW here in New York uh, till a little bit later. We started getting them on, on, on Channel 11, what is now Warner Brothers or something. I forget what it is. Um, but um, I started watching some of that. And, you know, as I got older, you know, ECW kicked in and I started watching ECW, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pro wrestling geek. Like um, I stopped for a little while when, when John Cena came around and he started making people tap out. He made Shawn Michaels tap out and I was done. I was like, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. With and that then, super weak, barely holding it on. Uh, right, right. 
<laughs> and I was done. I'm like, I'm, and I did. I stepped away for a while, but then they sucked me back in, you know, and I'm like, oh, I'm back. All right. And then I stepped away again, <laughs> but now my son sucked me back in. I'm in, I'm in again. And I'm, I'm a, I'm a lifer, whether I'm, I'm involved or not. You know, I, I still enjoy going to live shows, even if I'm not following the product actively, uh, which I kind of am now, you know, with, with the relaunching PW Hustle and, and WLR over on, on Hameen Media. Shouts to those guys. You know, um, um, I've, been, I've been following a, a bit more, but I've been a, a pro wrestling fan forever. I love Japanese wrestling. Um, been following that for a long time. Um, I'm a WWF guy, WWE guy, but, but uh, I, I've, I've uh, since expanded my, my reach to anything I can find, right? So in, in the last few months, I've been to two indie shows. I went to AEW. I went to the WWE. And I think I'm forgetting something that I want. Oh, and MLW. I went to go see MLW. Like that was in the last two months. Just taking my son to all these events because he's a wrestling fan. And I, I didn't get to go see a live event till I was older because my mom couldn't pay for it. Mm-hmm. So when I got a job, you know, I was, I was 16. I took my, my, my cousin and myself to Madison Square Garden to go see the WWE. Nice. And I kept going to shows after that. But my son is in a little bit of a better position. You know, he's like, hey, I want to go. I'm like, you want to go see Brian Danielson? Let's go. Like, you know, you want to go see whomever you want to go see. You know, Roman Reigns? Let's do it. Cody Rhodes? Yes, yeah, sure. Let's go. You know, and it's a pleasure to do. So, um, you know, th- th- I'm, I'm back in. So I'm, I'm going to be talking about professional wrestling actively for a while now until I, until they do something else that's stupid that pisses me off and, and I don't want to watch anymore, but. Yeah, I mean, it, it is kind of the life of a wrestling fan. Like, I think there's a number of times there. There's probably been periods of years and years that I didn't watch any wrestling. But right. like you mentioned, they always suck you back in because when you are a fan of the craft of right, uh, right. whatever you want to call it, I like to say right. the sport, but some people don't like when you say that. If you're a fan of it, though, of the art form, I guess you might say, uh, then you're always going to be able to be pulled back in, especially when you start, uh, I don't know, it's kind of chasing the news, the new highs, if you will, you start looking into the different areas, then you, then you find these whole new worlds. Like you mentioned Japanese wrestling. Like I went through a period a few years ago when I, I, I mean, I knew it existed. It was about yeah. the extent of it. And then I actually started watching some of it. And next thing I know, I'm like <laughs> in a deep rabbit hole. I'm watching old Masawa stuff from 30 <laughs> years ago. I mean, it's, it's wild and there really is no end to it. So it's like, it's like, it's a hobby that can never end really. Cause right. there's, I don't think you could ever watch all the wrestling that exists. I don't think that. No, 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 or do you want to right I, last night the impact was on tv and i was like what am i doing watching this you know but, <laughs> but i left it on you know i kept watching i remember um after uh, i had i had left it alone and and uh, one of my friends uh, dragged me out to a ring of honor show uh after a certain amount of time he's like come to ring of honor with me and i'm like fine whatever let's go and i saw davy richards uh versus roderick strong for the roh heavyweight title that was it. I was back in. I'm like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. You know, and, and this is after Japan, after ECW had faded, you know. Um, but there's always something. There's always a, some performer that sucks you back in and does something that you're like, wow. You know, I, I, I want to see that. So, uh, you know, um, my son dragged me back in. But, but Cody Rhodes um, leaving AEW, going back to the WWE and, and, and really like putting a, a, a rocket behind his, his career. You know, it, it sucked me in and I wanted to know what was going on with Cody. And then I got invested into the bloodline uh, angle. So I'm like, this is good. I covered Monday Night Raw for three years, I think, or four years straight. And it was the worst show on television. What years the were those? The, the times where it was the worst. It was the, That's when I covered it. I'm really bad with dates. Okay. But, um, but uh, I probably remember, the time I checked out too, because I, I, I remember was Bobby Lashley years. being involved in a gimmick where um, he was Lana's uh, lover. Oh my God! No, you're talking. Oh, you're talking about like the 2018 to 2020 yeah, or so around probably. that time. Oh, that was an all-time right. low. Oh yeah, my God! Yeah, Baron Corbin prominently featured. Uh, it was <laughs> horrible, bro. And and we did everything along with the Strangler Steve King, who used to wrestle in the WWE back in the day. What's up? And and the Andrew Bello. We, we did everything to avoid talking about actual Raw. Right. So we talked about everything else. And then finally, we would get to Raw or whatever and talk about that. Um, and, and I stopped. You know, I, I, I had to stop watching. But now I'm reinvested. You know, so I'm, I'm back in. It, it's, it's always cool, especially when you, I mean, at least for me, like with my kids to go watch wrestling. It, it's dope. You know, so I'm with it. 
I'm back one, in. One more thing I want to ask you before we What's dive that? a little bit further into some of the, the weird weirdness we're going to get into here. Uh, you know, wow. How do you explain why you love professional wrestling to people? Because I, I have a lot of friends that I just, I just can't possibly ever get them to understand. You know, right. I, it's just one of those things. And maybe part of it is, is the live experience. Cause every time I've gotten out too, like it is ultimately usually a live experience that sucks me back in and, and feeling the energy there. And, and it is one of those things that it can be hard to even explain on paper. What is so amazing about it? Well, you know, that's a really good question. And, and uh, people ask all the time. In particular, in my world, right, because I'm I'm doing you know the fringe and and people know that I'm a, I come from the pro wrestling world, so th there's some crossover and and people whenever I do a guest show they ask me exactly the same thing you know like uh, um, damn how'd you get involved with wrestling why are you a wrestling fan this that and the other and, and when I was a kid I thought it was legit I thought it was it was for real I thought it was a shoot like they say right I, I thought it was the real deal I cried. When when Earthquake sat on Hulk Hogan because I thought Hulk Hogan was going to die, you know, like uh, when when Earthquake sat on on, I on the snake, uh, man, I couldn't. Yes, I couldn't, that was my next thing. He sat on Damien and I was like, what happened? What do you I think I was literally in tears. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know I was in tears. You know what I mean? So um, uh, I believed it. I believed it. But. Even after figuring out that it was choreographed, it's staged. You know, I, I still was invested mm -hmm. because I loved it. And then I started figuring out who was going to win. So I got, I got a different, I was invested in it in a different way because I was like, okay, I can, I can decode this. Mm. I'm like, well, that guy's going to be WWE champion one day because they're giving him a serious push right. and he just won the intercontinental title. And that's the stepping stone. At least back in the day, yeah, you know, it used to be. So I was like, "Yeah, man," you know, and I started figuring it out, you know. And but when people ask me, like, "Why do you like professional wrestling nowadays?" I tell them, because, "Why do you like going to the movies?" You know, right. and and they're like, "Well, you know, it's it's totally different." I'm like, "No, it's not. It's the same thing. There's a storyline, right, that gets you invested into the storyline, and there's a payoff at the end of the movie. It's a three-hour soap opera that involves." choreographed violence yeah but you know? on, on an even higher level right. not only that but it's a movie where the actors do all their own stunts and write a lot of their own stuff on the yeah. fly so yeah. it's like improv it's it's uh stunt, it's stunt, it's, all, it's everything in one right and and when and when when you see that and, and you truly have a grasp of what's going on you start really appreciating what some of these people can do mm -hmm. because it's next level amazing Right. And, and, and uh, a lot of the world is, is familiar with The Rock now, right? But The Rock came from pro wrestling. And we were sitting there like, good Lord, this guy has something, right? Like, it's incredible how charismatic and how athletic and the women love him, you know? And he's just like, he's just a freaking man, right? And, and it carried over. But that's not, that's not uh, 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 common, even in the professional wrestling world, you have people that command that type of, of uh, attention from the audience and people that struggle to do it and they get themselves over in different ways, meaning they get the crowd's attention in a different way, right? Like may, whether they're, they're in ring work or, or, or something else. But, but to be able to have all the tools, you have to be a, an, an exceptional human being, right? It's something that's special. And, and that's what pro wrestling brings, uh, you know, like to the table from in my, like, you, it's it's real athleticism. I call them athletes. You know, people are, they're not they're absolutely athletes. Absolutely, absolutely athletes. One hundred. I can't do that shit. They're Hell athletes. No. <laughs> Hell no, right? Do what Rob Van Dam does. Do it. You know, go go go. Or, or Ricochet nowadays. You want to go ahead? Go ahead and do that. Like he's an acrobat. Maybe it's still athleticism. Call him an acrobat if you want. I I, I think it's made it a, a very um entertaining. You know. Um, or, or someone like LA Knight nowadays who, who, uh, isn't an acrobat, but he's super charismatic, mm -hmm. like incredible charisma that he commands the attention of, of people in the audience. You know, like you look at that and it's like, wow, you know, and, and then you get a better view of what's going on in the political spectrum when you see somebody like, like Donald Trump mm. and he gets up and I'm not a Trump fan, by the way, I'll just put that out there, but <laughs> he gets in front of people. And boom, 
He commands the room, right? LA Knight or the Rock. Bring it in, right? And he'll have people chanting and the whole freaking deal. He knows what he's doing, right? And that's that's um, that's rare, and that's why uh, you know, and you can pick out who's going to do what, just like you can do it in, in the in the professional wrestling world. Who's most likely to succeed? You can do it in the political spectrum too. And maybe Does that it's, it's is that a decent answer for you? Oh, absolutely. And okay. maybe it's that sort of decoding aspect is where like some of the overlap with uh, I guess what many would call conspiracy. To me, it's just a higher level decoding of politics and what we see right. out there. Uh, right. Once you start to learn how the storylines work, yeah. you learn learn the little signs to spot, and you can say, "All right, maybe I don't know exactly what went on in in the writer's room or in the booker's room, but I can tell the direction that things are right. going." Right. But, and, and sometimes, you know, it's spot on. Like now I'm having a little bit of trouble because uh, Vince is kind of stepped away, even though you still see his his fingerprints on stuff. You can see but the when, hallmarks uh, right, pop, but, pop in now and then. Yeah. Exactly. When Vince was in full control, I was like Nostradamus. Right. <laughs> bang, 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 bang. This is happening, you know, and that's just the way it is. So I got to I got to relearn some of it. Like in, in AEW, I'm, it's not the same. Right. Like I, I sit there, I'm like. Orange Cassidy has to lose this belt right now, right? Mm -hmm. And then he doesn't. And I'm like, he's definitely losing tonight, right? And then he does. I haven't figured that out yet, but I have actually. Uh, uh, Tony Khan has no idea what the hell he's doing. But besides, the point, <laughs> he's making it up as he goes. But you know, right. we get some cool stuff out right. of it. So that's but but uh, but the decoding factor comes comes into play there or whatever. And still, there's the same principles, right? It's the same box that they're working out of. So to to get somebody over with the crowd and and make them palatable, and then push them and sell them in a way that you can monetize them and get people invested into the product that way. Or it's the same thing with the political spectrum. Right. Well, one thing I want to get into is, is now where that overlap sort of ha has come together. And you did a conversation with Sam Tripoli a couple of years ago, getting into some of this stuff. And um, cause I kind of had this idea, like, is there like a cult symbolism in pro wrestling? Cause I see it everywhere else. And at, at first I, I kind of thought not really, but then, I thought about it a little more and I started to think of some more instances. And then I listened to your show with Sam and I was like, oh, no, there's a good number of stuff out there. But I, I don't want it to seem like, you know, we're going to talk about this subject, but I don't think either of us think that there's necessarily a grand conspiracy within right. all of professional wrestling to right. like, you know, push occult things. But it does work its way in there and probably for a number of different reasons, because it's so imbued in the culture and because there are probably and in some cases that we'll talk about later, definitely some people that are, are immersed in the cult and that they, oh. of course, will move that stuff into their own character, their own sort of presentation. Absolutely. Like the, the occult is real, right? It's the, the hidden, right? Or, or the mysticism of it. It's, re it's real. This, this, these things are real. Um, but at some point, it, it shifted over into the mainstream, you know, and, and it was embraced by corporate America, you know, and it, it was embraced by the music industry. You know, and and it was used to manipulate in large part. And I think subconsciously it's still a thing. But uh, does the WWE, for instance, or AEW right now mean to subconsciously manipulate you via occult symbolism? I don't believe that to be the case. Maybe some of the uh, uh, in, in musical acts, maybe that that might be in play a little bit um, a little bit more. But, you know, I think I think what's happened is. All of this, uh, it, it's become popularized. Conspiracy culture has crossed over to the mainstream, right? And when people see the all CNI of ours, they know what it is. You know, but a few years ago, I, I don't know how many years ago, like I said, I'm horrible with dates, but um, a, a few years ago, um, it wasn't a thing. You know, it was at least not for the mainstream. For us, it was, you know, and then it started crossing over into the History Channel and ancient aliens, you know, and, uh, you know, top 10 conspiracies on the learning channel or whatever, right? It's all over the place, the travel channel. Uh, and, and you see the symbolism, right? The Freemasons, right? And you see the symbolism, the symbolism that they use and what it means, right? And then you look at it in the music industry, which is what's, I think it's been, it's played a large part in popularizing uh, the concepts. And, I mean, the symbols and the concepts behind the symbols, right? So, a lot of people have some idea that these things may not be uh, on the up and up, especially if you're a Christian, right? Or they could be used uh, in a way uh, that is good, but then they can be used for bad, right? Or we talk about Alistair, Alistair Black or whatever his name is now, uh, uh, Malachi, whatever the hell, 
Malachi in, Black now, yeah. Yeah, Malachi Black and AW. Um, it is Moloch, right? How, how does Moloch cross over to the mainstream consciousness where people, if you walk the street and you ask the regular person, they may not know, but it's more prevalent now. They'll be like, oh, who's Moloch? Oh, I remember Alex Jones, you know. Right, uh, right. Yeah, um, it's, it's it's more likely someone will have at least have come across something right. like the Alex Jones, right. uh, you know, Bohemian Grove video exactly. now than say even 10 years ago. Exactly. Right. Exactly. My point. Thank you for for spelling that out a lot better than I could. Um, <laughs> so so it's crossed over into the mainstream and we had the, the Taco Bell uh, Bell Illuminati commercial. Right, right, you know? yeah. And th there's a bunch of other commercials that that use occult symbolism in it because of of things like Kanye West and Jay-Z and Rihanna, you know, pushing it out there. And it's before them, but I'm just talking about the, the current day popularization of those concepts, right? Because you can find occult symbolism in music way back, right? Go to the Beatles, sure, right? Yeah. You know, um, and, uh, and you find it there. But um, nowadays it's been pushed into the mainstream because of, of these artists, you know, and um, it's been embraced by corporate America because they know that they can monetize it. They know that they can get people's attention uh, uh, for it. And I think if they can subconsciously influence, they're going to take it. But I think it's a byproduct. I don't think it's their their um, exact intentions, their ultimate intention anyway, at least with most of corporate America. And certainly not with the WWE and AEW or any large wrestling company. But what they're doing is they're taking advantage of what's going on in the mainstream right now. So they know people are familiar with the all seeing eye and Egyptian symbolism or, or some, uh, what is it? Uh, Scottish symbolism now with the, with the former NXT tag team champions. I forget their names. Um, oh, that the, the Viking Raiders. No, 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 no. The, the female ones. They're two witches. I don't know if you're familiar. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. I didn't realize they were supposed to be witches, but that oh, makes they, sense. Yeah, there's something. Yeah, yeah, they, okay. they have crystal balls and, and a whole deal or whatever. Okay. Or Alistair Black, he, he's literally named after Alistair Crowley, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and they did that consciously, him and Triple H. They're like, well, what, what, what name do we give you? Well, let's call you Alistair Black over, uh, after Alistair Crowley, you know? And, and uh, that's what they've done. That's, what, that's why you find occult symbolism. For sure, you can find it, right? But what's the intent of it? Uh, when it comes to professional wrestling, you know, and I've spoken to several professional wrestlers about it that um, I'm like, hey, what do you think? You know, am I, am I reaching here or is there like a grand conspiracy? And everybody that I've spoken to has told me, no, there is no grand conspiracy. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it at least, you know, they're like, I didn't see it, you know, but some people come in with their own um, way of thinking and their own way to get over, you know, look at the Wyatt family, Bray Wyatt. You know, and, and he was putting together a bunch of freaking crazy occult stuff. You know, he, he had he had the reptilians up there, too, like uh, in, in one of the fun houses that he was doing or whatever, yeah, I, yeah. if I remember correctly. You know, so you're going to find it all over the place. You know, Anubis, the God of Death, you know, all this stuff. Um, but what do they mean by it? What's the intent behind it? You know, that that's that's where it starts getting uh, if. Well, let, let's dig a little bit further into some of the specifics here, because um, a lot of people, um, I, there's some overlap, I would like to think, but I'm sure not all of my audience are necessarily wrestling fans, uh, <laughs> but uh, so they might not know who these you know, Bray Wyatt, Alistair Black, Malachi Black is. Why don't we, I think I was going to save him for later. Maybe, maybe it's actually the best place to start with uh, Malachi Black or Alistair Black. He was Alistair Black in WWE, uh, as you said. I'm a dummy. I didn't even think of it. Of course, it was based on Alistair. Of course, it took <laughs> Alistair Crowley. And right. then Malachi Black, I was just reading an article um, where he talks about how, yeah, no, that's Malachi is supposed to be Moloch. And he actually, Malachi Black is one of the more interesting cases because he actually is, he looks at his own character as this evolution that exists across different companies. So like the character of Malachi Black in yeah. his mind anyway right. is the same character of Alistair Black from WWE that had a transformation and he talks about how he they injured his eye in WWE in a, in a storyline. Yeah. And then he showed up in AEW with this black over his eye in the same place he was injured in WWE. And people are like, oh, he still has the injury. But he's talked about how the – and now since then, his, he's almost in blackface now. I mean, like half, half his face yeah. is black now when he comes out. And he's talked about this is the – is 
the Moloch. This is Alistair left and then like summoned Moloch. And then Moloch has now influencing the character, the former Alistair, the now Malachi. And as you see the black take over his face, he's described this is showing more and more of the influence of Moloch coming into the character. So I think this is a case where, as you mentioned, this is someone who, when I say he's an occultist, I don't know if he literally like goes at home and tries to summon entities at night or anything. Maybe he does, but he's certainly immersed in it. Yeah. Check out his tattoos. Uh, he's, uh, you know, I think he's Dutch and he's very immersed in like the Dutch pagan sort of mythology. So that's I'm probably the number one case uh, I would say of, of the most overt, uh, definitely intentional on his part. I don't think right. it's like a conspiracy way, but I think he's into it. So he, he puts it into his character, but right. he's I'm totally curious, yeah, Go ahead, third, your further thoughts on, uh, on Malachi. No, 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 you're absolutely right. I think he, I mean, he's, he's, admittedly into the occult right uh, um this is a professional wrestler uh for the, for anybody out there that doesn't know if you google him you'll find him right and, and uh he's wrestled in in the two biggest companies right and uh he has a certain amount of of uh, of a following uh with uh hardcore wrestling fans right and and he's an admitted dark arts practitioner i guess you could say he he's uh he's into old school north mythology mm -hmm. you know uh and and he he subscribes to this sort of stuff um he, he's very knowledgeable i mean it, like like you said like i mean what do you have to you you have to be somewhat knowledgeable to be able to cross over from alistair black to moloch in one thing right and and, and try to try to try to put that together like i thought it was pretty original you know that he's like you know he's and you have to be a fan of him to find out because they're not, these are two competing companies. So he went from one company as Aleister Black and moved, changed his name right. for copyright issues at AEW to. Yeah, Malachi. none of this is said on TV. It's like right. stuff you have to either know because you really follow right. him or you hear him talk about it. Exactly. So, and, and he does interviews uh, away from, from the big stage and explains this whole deal. So everything that, that Mark just laid out, the entire storyline, he's made this up in his brain. This is how he justifies right. the, the, the transformation. And I think it's pretty cool that he's so committed to character, yeah. but uh, people look at it and they're like, Whoa, that guy is Satan, you know? And sometimes he says he is, he's like, I might be Satan. I might be Lucifer. I, I don't know. He mm -hmm. says that, you know? So, so it feeds into it, you know, it, it, it feeds into the whole dark arts aspect of things, you know, but, but is, is he um, a, a part of a bigger agenda? I don't I don't believe that to be the case. I think we need to see more evidence for that. Right. But I think it's just him. He was into really dark freaking black metal, <laughs> you know, and 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 that's what got him into all of these concepts. You know, uh, I know people like this. So I, I, I I'm familiar. I know what happens. Right. So for sure. Right. So this is how he got involved. And I think it's pretty cool. You know, um, that doesn't mean go ahead and follow it. You can research it. You know, if you want right. to follow it, go ahead. You know, I mean, I don't know, but it doesn't mean like, uh, I don't, I don't think there's an, an ulterior motive behind it. If, if that makes any sense. Right. It's just, uh, he's probably, you know, he's writing his own fan fiction of his own character essentially. Right, and, right. uh, to him, it's probably just like, if you're a wrestling fan and you're into this stuff, of course, the most successful wrestlers are the people that can bring their own personality, right. uh, sort of, and turn it up to, to 20 or whatever, you know, whether right, it's right, Stone Cold Steve Austin being the, you know, the ultimate redneck or the rock or whatever it may be. They've all said in their own interviews, like they had, they achieved the most success when they were able to channel their real self, their real right. inner character, and then just turn it up to, to 11. Right, right, right. Uh, then, and those are two of the other wrestlers that, I mean, legendary, right. That, that sold the most merch and got most, the, the most people invested because of, of their character, because of the way they are. And that, and that's the point I tried to make whenever I do any of these shows with professional wrestling, right? Like we can talk about the occult aspect of it and have fun in, in that, in that manner. But I think that what's most interesting about it is, is the parallels with the real world and, and how we are manipulated, you know, um, through the television and, and through charisma, do we, do we really vote? If you believe in a voting system, do we really vote on issues or do we vote on charisma? Is it a popularity contest? What what are we being manipulated by? And are our thoughts our own, right? Like if you listen to prof if professional wrestling, they try to feed you your thoughts. Mm -hmm. They try to tell you what to think, right? Like Roman Reigns, who is the biggest professional wrestler in the WWE right now, was handpicked by Vince McMahon to be that guy. The crowd would not buy into it. So they kept trying and trying and trying until it finally worked.
you know, but they, they wanted to tell you which direction to go in. You know, it's the same. It's the same exact way in the political spectrum in the real world. We are constantly being bombarded with people telling us where to go. And somehow they've managed to, to, to make us believe that these are our choices. How many of them are our choices? Like, was it really my choice to love Hulk Hogan? Right, right. You know, was it? I really want to think so, but. I, me too. You know, I want to <laughs> believe that, you know, and, and I can make an argument uh, um, in that direction that, yeah, ultimately it was, but was it? You know, if, if they had put, I don't know, Ric Flair in that, but would I be a total Ric, Ric Flair mark? I, I don't know. You know, and, and you see the differences like now, like uh, my era was when I was a little kid, I was four years old when Hulk Hogan uh, uh, busted out, right? But you see other people like CM Punk, who is another professional wrestler. Uh, and he has some mainstream uh, uh, appeal. He used to wrestle, he used to fight in the UFC. He got his ass whooped. Mm -hmm. um, but um, he used to fight is a very nice way to put it. Yes, yes. He, he <laughs> got his ass whooped a couple of times in UFC. He participated in getting his face right. flashed in about three times. Um, he was on TV for a few minutes. <laughs> you know, um, but uh, he comes out wearing Bret Hart. Uh, which is another professional wrestler, but he was the main guy of a different era, right? So did they tell him to like Bret Hart? Right. right. You know, they absolutely told him to like Bret Hart, actually. Sure. Like, you know, so this is what, this is what happens. And, and when you, when you become aware of it, I think it's a little bit easier, a, a primer uh, to real life. Once you're a professional wrestling fan to, to become awake to these concepts. But once you become aware of it, you're like, shit. Like, what do I, like, what, is, what's really me? Like, what is really my choice? What, are, what right. really comes from me? Right. You know, Forget and that's, that's, that's what I think is most important about professional wrestling. Because it's like, it's like the, the glasses from They Live to have yep. another professional, yes. uh, yes. another professional wrestling uh, 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 reference, right? Because Roddy Piper was in that movie. And if you haven't seen One of my they favorite Live, movies of all time. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've seen, and I'm pretty sure oh, yeah. anybody listening to a show of this, uh, of, of, of this subject matter is at least familiar. But if you haven't seen it, if you're not, you have homework. If anybody's watching, right, this. right, right. Put this on pause, come back to us. And, and <laughs> you have to go see freaking, uh, uh, they live. Um, it's, it's incredible. And pro wrestling fans will enjoy like what feels like a 40 minute, like fight scene in the alley with Roddy <laughs> Piper. I won't say anymore, but everybody that's seen it knows what I'm talking about. Right. Right. Absolutely. Every time and, he and, gets so, over no. Right. It's, it's dope. Every, so, so he puts on these glasses that allow him to see what the world is really about. Right. And he puts on these glasses and all the advertisements are different, you know, instead of come by or Ford motor company, it'll say, obey, you know, listen, you know, and all that other stuff or whatever. But he, he gets to see a bunch of reptilians or, or aliens that are running the world, you know, but when he takes off the glasses, you don't see that. Mm -hmm. That's what professional wrestling is to me. Uh, and, and to others that come from that world, you get to put on the professional wrestling glasses and it's like, wait a minute, something is right. up here, you know? And, and, and that's, that's the most important thing that I take from, from my time. I, I, I am very grateful to have been placed in that direction. Personally. It's interesting because I, I, when I think back, I think my, I mean, I did a political podcast for 10 years before I decided, decided to branch off and go into th this direction, I guess right. you could say. And I first got into politics, though, pretty much through pro wrestling, because I was a huge fan of Jesse Ventura growing up as <laughs> commentary. Like, I always loved the heel commentators. Uh, and then when he ran for governor and became yeah. governor, I was like, what the hell? I was like blown away. So I got even more sort of interested in what he was doing and started reading his books. And that's something he always talked about is how, you know, what he discovered is that politics was just like pro wrestling. Right. Uh, you know, the, the wrestlers would go out there. They would have the most heated rivalry. Uh, you would see them like, you know, openly making each other bleed. I mean, nearly killing each other. Uh, and then they would go to the bar afterwards and have some whiskeys and say cheers. <laughs> and they're and they're all friends. It's all part yeah. of the performance. And he would say that politics was exactly the same right. way. Right. You would see these feuds between these between these different people and the, these, you know, whatever. And they go back and they're all hanging out in the back. They're all talking to the same lobbyists. They're all on the same team. They're yeah. all participants in the same performance. So right. I, I, I do think there is something to that, that if you've, especially if you've crossed the Rubicon, so to speak, where you, you, you started when you're a kid and you kind of believe it, you take it at face value. And then at some point you realize, oh yeah, this is like, this is a performance of some kind. This is not just right. something organic happening. But then if you stick around, <laughs> you, you do start to develop the sense of, okay, I can start to sort of see what's going on. And I yeah. think it does 
provide the same sort of like filter that you can then apply on whether it's politics or any any aspect of, of propaganda or what have you, right. you can start to, to use that right. same filter. Right. No, that's a broader term, right? It's a, it's a better term, not to, not to narrow just the politics. It's, mm -hmm. it's to the world in general and how things are, are painted and what the truth is behind it, what the motivations are behind it. You know, pro wrestling is a microcosm of the world. And it's interesting because, you know, the biggest knock people will say is that, you know, pro wrestling is all rigged. But sometimes I'll, 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 I watch real sports and I get into real sports. And sometimes you can start to see it in real sports. You can see where the storyline's going Man. and then it plays out. And that makes you think, okay, so are we just the only ones that admit that, that we're rigged, you know, that we watch something rigged? Are, are we just the only ones that can actually accept it? Are we actually the most in the most honest sort of, uh, you know, realm with this thing? Everything is rigged in some capacity. Mm -hmm. It's just to what level is it rigged? Exactly. Right. And professional wrestling is isn't even rigged. It's openly. Uh, it's like saying a movie is rigged. Like, right. yeah, I mean, it <laughs> right. it's openly a performance. Sports mm -hmm. are rigged. Mm -hmm. Right. Because they're not saying, uh, you know, hey, we're going to give this guy a push. We're, we're going to give the New York Yankees a push and, and, right. and hope that they win the World Series. They're not saying that. But is it rigged? Do they have the biggest freaking budget? Do they get every freaking ball player available to help hey i'm a yankee fan i'm from the bronx i fully endorse it let's do it you know but i'm just saying to be realistic and here. they're still behind the the scrappy rays but that's a whole nother conversation oh, God, i don't i don't talk about that <laughs> but uh <laughs> but uh but yeah like um but do they get every opportunity to win yeah they give them every opportunity to win you know the lakers do they have every opportunity to win yeah they do you know, and 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 if you want to take it a step further, there are people out there that will take it a step further. You know, I'm, I'm well, not that's the what right the show's person. all about. So we can <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the right person to talk to about that. But you can get other people on. I can hook you up that could take it a step further than that. Certainly, you know, no, certainly. Right. I mean, even without digging too deep on that, I mean, there are open scandals. I mean, the NBA referee scandal, I, I forget right. the name. I mean, that was very openly known. But uh, if you look further into that, it almost seems like he was the scapegoat for for covering up the fact that the whole thing and everything in that realm has been rigged from the get-go especially when they find say a star player like a michael jordan or what have you yeah they didn't make up that jordan is actually very talented and is probably was the best player in the league but they're all i mean what was also uncovered there in this in this sort of investigation what he will now openly talk about a lot is like yeah they'll be told back off this player don't mm -hmm. don't don't call fouls on him. Just right. let, don't call, you know? And right. so, yeah, maybe it's, it's, it's a more subtle rigging in a way, yeah. but it's those sports is determined by these little, I mean, these, these are all elite athletes. They're all competing at the highest possible level. Right. So it really is just the little things here and there that nudging. can make or break a, a successful player. Totally agree. Right. Totally agreed. It's, it's the nudging that, that takes place, you know, uh, and, and that can change things big time because these are the best at what they do. Right. So a little thing here, a little thing there will will change the outcome of something and and uh, there's uh, more than than a plethora of accusations in that direction right with with all of these sports I'm curious when you first started to delve more uh, into the conspiracy realm like how much did you how much do you think those that pro wrestling filter was was helping you filter like specific events um when when you'd see a certain uh, event maybe portrayed on tv um did that help you say okay like what were the bookers <laughs> what were the bookers thinking here like what's behind this you know i didn't i didn't um i actually came to both things separately because hmm. i think that was just my mindset like I've, I've been wired for this you know that it's it's probably genetic on some sort right like i i, I would always question certain things. I would question authority. I was always into um, the, the occult, right? I was always into uh, um, high strangeness, you know, shows like Coast to Coast AM where they would talk about time traveling ghost. And, and I was always into that. Right? And, um, and I knew something was off. I just didn't know what, you know, I, I, I didn't know what it was. Um, one thing I can note is when, when I got really good at this, at, at just the coding stuff. I, I was I was already doing it, but I wasn't confident enough. But when when Barack Obama was was uh giving his keynote speech at, at the Democratic National Convention, I was like, that guy's gonna be the president of the United States. Mm -hmm. And I was like, they just gave him the intercontinental title. They just let him cut the the big right. promo. Right. Right. They just featured him on 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 the the top demographic on Monday Night Raw. Right, right. And they're going to give this guy the push to the moon. 
you know, and you just knew, right? You just knew like that was going to happen. And if, in retrospect, Bill Clinton, nobody took, uh, I think it was Michael Dukakis he was running. Nobody took Michael Dukakis uh, seriously. It wasn't Michael Dukakis. I don't remember who he ran against or George Bush. I forget. But r- regardless, at the end of the day, it was George Bush, I think. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Um, it, the first every, George, the second, right, oh, yeah, the, the first, first George Bush. Right. First, right. Um, uh, and then it was Bob Dole, I think he ran against. No, no, nobody took that that seriously. You know, it was it was Bill Clinton. That was it, because he was super charismatic and and uh, he was on Arsenio Hall playing the freaking saxophone. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, what a cool dude. It's getting a big push. Yeah, exactly. It's like, wait a minute. I've seen this before. I've seen the macho man on Arsenio Hall. You don't get that Arsenio Hall spot if you're not getting pushed, just like you don't get that main event slot on Monday right. night if you're not getting pushed. Right, right, right. You don't see a mid-carter or, 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 or you know, a mid-carter is a person that is not featured in the main event. Mm-hmm. Right in, in professional wrestling, and they Which don't. You get might call vote. like a congressman, maybe, or something like that. You know, like a, a mid level politician. You right, could say right, like right. You know, you they don't get national exposure. Right, right. But when you start seeing them getting national exposure, it's for a reason. Mm-hmm. Keep your eye on it. Not all of them take off, but you can you can fairly well say who will and who won't, just based on the way they act and and and. and uh, how how they put themselves across you know so you you can kind of figure that out so i remember when barack obama gave that speech and i was like this guy's gonna be the president of the united states he's gonna be the first black president you know and, and that's it that's what happened you know but i didn't it wasn't because of anything it was just because of professional wrestling and i, I was like oh god this is gonna be the guy you know and and, and uh, i mean there was a lot of different instances of, of that um it's it's the, the world is a stage. I've, I've been told I've been told that so many times by so many different people. And no matter how many times I try to go against that grain, I keep coming back to it because there are so many examples of it being just a straight up charade, a straight up stage, a straight up just like performance, you know, and I, I don't want to believe that. I, I don't want to, I want to believe that these things are genuine, that things are actually happening. And to some degree they are, but then again, at the end of the day, like, like the submersible, man, like I, I was just, I just did a whole show on this. I, I was just sucked in by this, you know, and I sat down and I'm watching and I'm like, man, these people are going to die. It sucks, man. You know? And I'm like, man, they only have 10 hours of, of air to breathe. Like, man, oh, they're You're getting they're invested here. in the storyline. Tell me about it. And, and this is me after knowing all of this. Right, right. Still getting invested in storyline that they laid out. But I believed it to be real, right? And I believed, uh, you know, and, and, and I don't know anything about submarines. I don't know anything about this, right? So, so when I first heard about it, my first thought, and I told my wife, I was like, how do we lose a submarine this day and age? But I don't know jack about submarines. Right. It's just an instinct. It's right. Like, so I'm like, how do we technology lose submarines? Of some kind? Of- right. And, and I'm like, whatever you know let me just keep going and and first day into it when they're like they got 40 40 hours of air left i'm like send a freaking drone down there why aren't you sending a drone down there it's common sense to me i'm like well maybe i don't know the procedure maybe i don't know the red tape around maybe because i don't know anything about this world right admittedly so maybe i don't know this stuff and they're like oh sonar is picking up uh banging every 30 minutes you know, and it has to be artificial. It has to be humans. They're probably banging on the submersible and a sonar is picking it up every 30 minutes and they're giving a, a sort of SOS. And I was like, oh, damn, I hope they find it. And this is the, the human aspect of me getting invested. And this is what they do. And this is what pisses me off, <laughs> right? So I'm like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, damn, man, find these guys. There's a 19 year old kid there. I know that kid didn't want to have anything to do with this because he's 19 and he doesn't give a damn about the freaking Titanic. Yeah. I knew, so I'm like, go get these people. I don't care if they're billionaires. I'm like, get them out, right? Go get them. Then it turns out they finally do send the, 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 the remote uh, drone down there, finds a wreckage. This is on the fourth day or some shit, right? Everybody's dead. As soon as they, they say that everybody's dead, as soon as it's reported, the Navy comes out and says, oh, yeah, we knew about this um, two Four hours ago, after yeah. they went down. And right. I'm like, what? So what was everything else? Not only did the Navy knew, but the Navy went to Ocean Gate and told them, right? 
And then I see um, the director, James Cameron, the, the director of the Titanic on CNN. He's like, yeah, I knew on Monday that they were dead. I had got inside information hmm. from the Navy. This is on CNN. Go check it out. I'm not making this up. And I'm like, my God. So where's the entire narrative coming from? Where'd that whole story come from? Right. If who they who knew, is the booker where every right. news outlet says the same storyline? Right. And every, right. Right. Everybody, all of them. There's 40 hours left. There's 30 hours left. There's 20. There's five hours left. We only have they one. They just knocked hour. on the thing again. Like, right. They picked it up and it's, it has to, we, you know, there's, there's tons of sounds under underwater, but this sounds like it's human and it's coordinated. Bullshit. They made the whole thing up. Why did they make it up? I don't know. There's tons of conspiracy theories about why they made it up. But what I do know is that I was suckered into a narrative that wasn't the truth. Mm -hmm. And they knew the truth and they did not reveal the truth until afterwards. Kind of like a slap in the face. Yeah. In my opinion, I don't know how you feel about this, but but that's what happened to me. And after and 9-11, I was here for 9-11. And, and, um, and that's that's the biggest reason I got into this was uh, September. When you say here, you mean you were in the city. You in live New in the York. city, right? Yeah. Right. I'm from New York. I'm, I'm, I, I live in the Bronx, but I was in Manhattan. I was working wow. um, when it happened. Right. And I remember everybody filed into the streets. You know, I saw one of the towers collapse in front of my face. Wow. I went down towards the towers to try to pick up my cousin because my cousin went to school across the street from the towers. I don't know what the hell I thought I was going to do, but I thought I was going to do something. Right. I'm like, I'm going down there, you know, um, and, and I, I never made it down there, needless to say, because um, they blocked off the streets. But I, everybody was was shoulder to shoulder out there. Cell phones weren't working. And um, I'm with two of my friends. And I turned to them and I'm like, Osama bin Laden did this. I didn't know a damn thing about Osama bin Laden besides what the mainstream media told me. He was the big heel being pushed at the time, right? Exactly. He was plastered all over the news. For people to automatically, boom, revert back, terrorist attack, prob probably Arabs, probably Osama bin Laden. And they bought me hook, hook line, and sinker. Mm -hmm. Until uh, uh, four years after the fact, I think in 2005, my cousin that I went to pick up at the tower. He was the one who told me, he's like, everything you know about 9-11 is wrong. And I told him, stop, this is bull crap. And I was already into the world. I was already introduced to Bill Cooper. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I had put it down, but I was already introduced to it. I knew all about it. I knew all about the New World Order, the Illuminati. I knew about all of this stuff. Right. And he's like, everything you know is wrong. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? What do you mean? I'm like, I'll, I'll prove you wrong. And I'm here now because of it, because I couldn't prove him wrong. But this is, the, this is the narrative that they lay out. This is how they set up the traps. It's the same way they do it in professional wrestling. It's just benign in professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just to sell tickets to a wrestling show. Like, okay, right. no, we get it. No, no problem. Right. Uh, it, it is really interesting um, to look at it that way, you know, because uh, I think when, when you see everything as the storyline, it, it, it's, even people like us, even people that get it, you might say, or think we get it, or think what have we you. get it, right? We, we think exactly. we get it. Right? We're still human, and yeah. they still can suck us into the storyline, <laughs> whether it's whether it's the submarine or right. 9 11 or whether it's just a fucking wrestling storyline. And I, I get myself sucked in. I know it's, I know they want me to feel these emotions, and they've planned them for me. And I still sort of like in the moment we forget because our, our brains are sort of wired to not think on that mm. analytical level. Our, mm. our brains are wired in the moment to think like fight or flight, think what, you know, to react to, to what's occurring in front of us. And our brain literally just forgets that we're watching a movie or forgets that we're watching a performance and, and gets immersed in it. So even when you get it, so to speak, or even when you know that there's bookers behind it, you still can get just as sucked into the storyline. Yeah. It's, it's, do you want to believe it mm -hmm. or don't you? I always refer back to the X-Files and, and Fox Mulder had that poster of, of, a, of a UFO and says, I want to believe. Mm -hmm. I want to believe. Right. You know, but I realize that I want to believe. Right. But I also want to believe in humanity, you know, and I, and I want to believe. And ultimately, I trust. And that's what we should. And, and humans, for the most part, are very trusting. And, and you can tell because most humans don't do the research. They just consume. 
and trust that they're being told something that's truthful and hope that there's no agenda behind that. And the controllers, you know, the powers that be, whatever you want to call them, right? So they know that, that they can sneak in their agendas that way, keep us occupied in different ways. And we trust because they wouldn't lie to us, right? Why would they? You know, but nowadays, you know, people are, are using social media against them, whether it be uh, real or not, true or not, the information that's being put out, whether it be fact or false. It's having an effect one way or another. I don't know if it's the best way to go about things, you know, um, putting out information that is false, because there's a lot of false information in the alternative media, mm -hmm. a lot of it, right? But it does make people start to think, but just in what direction? Are, are we being funneled into another slaughterhouse? We're being led to a slaughterhouse, and then we think we're smart, we think we're awake, we think we get it, and we're actually going to another slaughterhouse on a different direction. It's like the dirt sheets, you know? Like, yeah, you, you read the dirt sheets, and you right. know, I'm always going to keep tying it back. It's, it's, uh, Tell them you, what a dirt sheet is. Tell them what the dirt sheet is. Oh, yeah, you're right. I, I gotta. You're, you're doing the same, what I should be I'm doing, trying. Is defining yeah. some of the stuff for right, people right. don't follow wrestling. So the dirt sheets are basically, well, it started as literally like little magazines that would get mailed out from like wrestling journalists that would, some people would have insider information. They would know certain bookers. They would know certain wrestlers. And then they would put out like the rumors, the dirt sheets, telling you kind of like what's going to happen, what's going on behind the scenes. Now it's, of course, all online. It's all websites and podcasts and that sort of thing. So it's not really sheets anymore. It's just sort of like, but it's, that, that term is still right. uh, used. But yeah, it's the same kind of thing. You know, you'll see uh, all this stuff come out like, oh, here's this drama with CM Punk. There's this thing going on backstage. There was this <laughs> brawl. And, right. and at some point you don't. And then, but then they start using some of it on TV and like right. referencing it, but not really talking about it. So you always have to be thinking, okay, this is like a real thing to happen, Man. but you is it or point. how much of it is? How you much bring of up it a fantastic point? Go ahead, finish up. Sorry. No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's all really, that really is a point. Like how much of this, even the real life aspects <laughs> of it, how much of it is still part of the storyline. And you have to always ask yourself, even if you're in the alternative media, which is like maybe like the dirt sheets, even if you think you're getting the real deal, how much of it is still you just being fed, the, fed some bullshit by the bookers <laughs> or by some other insight. Right. Right. So, so there's this term in professional wrestling for people like Mark and myself, right? <laughs> We are smart marks, right? right we know right. what's going to go down before it happens. That's what a Still smart fucking mark is. Right? A mark <laughs> is, you know, back in the day, it was terminology. They would put a mark on somebody in, in the carny days of professional wrestling. They'd put like an X and be like, oh, this guy, right? And, and everybody knows because he's easy to get money out of, right? So they would, you know, work him and they'd get money out of him, they, you know. So they, they call us marks nowadays, even though I think it's a derogatory term for for us the fans who are not marks anymore because we know that it's fake and we're still supporting the product maybe we're marks in that way right i guess but right, the right. professional wrestlers are the biggest marks because they they know it's fake and they're putting their bodies on the line for it yeah regardless yeah. right so marks right we're, we're the smart ones because there's a, there's a regular mark that is just sitting there suspending their disbelief and watching the movie but the smart marks are the ones that are behind the scenes decoding the movie and be like, this is what's going to happen before it happens because they got some type of inside information. Right. The alternative media is the smart mark of, <laughs> of, 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 the, of the alternative point of view. And, and I just realized this now, and I'm, I'm taking this and running with it, Mark. I hope you don't mind. Yeah, no, I, we, I think we had the revelation doing. at the same moment. So. <laughs> this is what we're doing. Everybody here in the alternative media, we are smart marks. Mm -hmm. We think we have it figured out. Right. And sometimes we kind of do. Right. But sometimes we don't. And we're still you know, being and, worked by someone. Right. And, 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 yeah. And, and, and worked is being, you know, uh, how, how do we put this being fooled? Right. And, right. and uh, into you're believing. Buying, buying, it's when you're buying the deception. Essentially. Right. Buy into the deception. You're being worked. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, perfect. Love it, Mark. Fantastic. <laughs> That's what we are here in your alternative media. If, 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 if you guys Mark. don't know who I am, um, my name is Billy Ray Valentine. Right. And, and I'm, I'm I've been doing this for a while for about seven years. Um, I, I've worked in, in several places. I've, I've, I've worked for Truth Frequency Radio. I've worked for David Icke. I've worked for Aftermath.fm, opening up for Clyde Lewis, right? Been a lot of places. Um, we're opening up a radio station called Freeworld.fm. And we call ourselves the alternative to the alternative. Hmm. It's the most smart mark thing I've ever- it's it's smarter mark. I'm thinking about it. Right? 
just like, what the hell, man? You know, it's like we, we know better than the marks. and we, We're the smartest of the marks, supposedly. Who knows? It's even worse at this point how much we're being manipulated and controlled. But, but that's what we're trying to do, right? And, and, and that's literally the slogan. If you go to freeworld.fm.com, you can, you can free, freeworld.fm, sorry. If you go there, you can sign up for free and we'll tell you when we launch. Um, but but it's, it's big words, it says the alternative to the alternative. Because mm-hmm. we're trying to provide an alternative to the alternative media. Because we realize that we buy into a lot of nonsense, right? But I guess where we're coming from is letting you know that we're buying into some nonsense or letting you know that some of the stuff that we've bought into might be nonsense, if that makes any sense. I don't right. know how many times I just said that. But yeah, yeah. I get, it is like the higher level right. smartness, you might say, of yeah, like yeah, yeah, recognition yeah, yeah. that no matter how much I know or the, how much I think I know, I have to realize I'm still there's a good chance I'm still being worked in some way. So even of when course. I'm reading all these insider reports about the, the brawl with CM Punk and the Bucks, that for all I know, that might've never fucking happened. It may like, have never this happened. This whole thing might be CM Punk got an injury and they're like, let's do something fucking wild. Let's make the biggest thing ever. Yeah. And it's still, for people that don't know, I guess I'll, I'll go into it. There was you know, CM Punk is a uh, now famous wrestler. He, he is someone that you might say sort of came up organically, but then maybe got, got a, you know, I don't know. Well, let's look at that. Let's look at that real quick. For yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, for people that don't know, right? CM Punk, like he's the guy that we said was kind of a UFC wrestler that got his ass whooped on television several times. Um, he he did this promo. Uh, he he spoke in front of tons of people in an in an arena, and it looked like it was off script. Right, the pipe it, bomb. It, it's called the pipe bomb promo. You can find it, right? And, and it looked like it was something organic, something different that went against what the programming was, that went against the authority of the WWE. And people were doubting whether or not it was real or it was fake. Turned out to be totally staged, even though what he was saying was real, but they allowed him to say it. They knew it was going to happen, right? Um, And and that's so, so much of a microcosm of what's happening to us in the alternative media. And it's so interesting that CM Punk was part of that original, not original, I mean, we did, this has been going on since the beginning of wrestling in the dark right. time, but uh, sort of the modern day original sort of like breaking the fourth wall moment right, in professional right, right. wrestling. And it does add that extra layer of, so that so to extend from that, so the, the thing that recently happened is he actually like left WWE 10 years ago and was for all intents and purposes retired. And then when Tony Khan, the billionaire, uh, launched AEW as the, sort of the alternative product, took a, took a couple of years, but eventually he did woo CM Punk to come out of retirement. Um, CM Punk is, well, I say well-known, but again, I don't know how much I'm being worked to have a big ego and kind of get into clashes with people sometimes. He might be the nicest, sweetest guy in the world. I have no idea. Never mind. So, <laughs> so who knows? Um, but that's, that's part of his persona, too. Like, they, they think he himself plays into that persona because it's, it's like part of his character. So even when he's doing an interview somewhere and saying this and that, you're thinking, how much am I being worked? by this guy but right. uh he had a match he got injured in the match at a press conference afterwards he pretty much openly mocked and and um sort of went in on on three wrestlers kenny omega uh and the young bucks known as the elite who are also executive vice presidents in aew they're not just wrestlers um and he basically said that they can't even they couldn't even manage a walmart and tony, <laughs> tony khan is just sitting there stunned stunned i don't know you know is this real or not it's on tv it's being presented to me how did it make air if it's not real but it's also live and it's cm punk so maybe this is just a guy blowing off steam eventually there's a fight backstage everyone gets suspended uh cm but cm punk is out for nine months but he was also injured so he had to be out for nine months anyway he's now back there now they have a whole separate show for him because supposedly these guys can't even be in, a, in an arena together at the same time mm. i don't know they were both on a show last week we can't at least kenny and uh, and uh, sam punk were both on the same show so i don't even know how much truth there is to that but they, they essentially made a whole new show based around cm punk where he's not doesn't really interact with these other wrestlers he he supposedly doesn't like but it does make you all wonder like is this i mean we'll know when it when a match happens you know if we actually get like a, a cm punk kenny omega match that will tell you even then, it might not tell you it was always a work. It might tell you it started off as a real thing and became a work. You just never really yeah. know. It's happening. We're getting that. It has to. There's it no way. To. There's no. I mean, Tony. Everyone Khan involved is enough of a business person to eventually right. make it happen. But I guess right. I'll always be asking myself: Was this always a work? You know? Of course, what, you was have it to always? Ask hey, I hurt yeah. myself. Let's do something fucking crazy. Here, you know? <laughs> because of the nature of the business, right? And this is what, what. Um, we have to ask ourselves as, as citizens of the world because of the nature of this reality, how and much it, of this is real. It's what I ask myself when I see someone like an RFK 
out there saying real shit about vaccines and things that I've known about for a long time and and finally getting like a big stage on like a Joe Rogan. And then you see him talking about it in the mainstream media. It's one of those things where I, that, then I pause and say, am I being worked? Is this a pipe bomb? Am I supposed mm-hmm. to think, oh, he's breaking through the matrix or is this just all part of the play? Right, so right. Saying. Absolutely, man. And he's a, he's a divisive figure. Well, not so much in the alternative media. He's divisive in my own mind. You know, I don't, I don't even know what to think. You know? I'm with you on that. But it, a lot of the alternative media is for him. They like him mm-hmm. fairly quite a bit. Yeah. They seem to think that, that he has a shot at becoming the president of the United States, which he does not. Like there's, there's no, if he does, then I'll know that it was all a work, I guess is what I'll say. No one gets the belt at the end of the day by accident. (laughs) And that's, that's the end of it right there. Right. No one, no one gets to be the top dog in professional wrestling without blessings and scripts from the people that control things. And at the end of the day, it's the same thing for the presidency of the United States. Uh, You don't make it there without a lot of people co-signing you. That's just it. You know, uh, it's it's not we really don't have a say, you know, we, in my opinion, you know, um, we really don't have. Well, even if even if you believe in in the election process, we are we are picking from two options that come from the same source. So how much of a, of a choice is that even on the surface level? You know, how much of a choice do you really have? It's like you go to Hagen and Dodge and they're giving you chocolate and vanilla please choose. But I want mint chocolate chip. We don't have mint chocolate chip. We got chocolate and vanilla. Well, maybe I'll go to Baskin. You can't go to Baskin Robbins. This is Hagen and Dodds. And we got chocolate and vanilla. Please choose. Those are your options. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing here in the United States. Well, Billy, I think that's a good uh, time to wrap things up. And I know you're going to stick around, hop into the smoke-filled room with me for a minute. But uh, before I do, I think, uh, yeah, well, first of all, I want you to plug everything you got going on, uh, your current podcast, Infinite Fringe. And of course, I know you're relaunching a lot of the pro wrestling-related content you're into. Yeah. Uh, so feel free to plug away on that. I think you also have an event coming up in New York in September, uh, 9-11 related, featuring some people that listeners uh, will certainly recognize. Right, man. Um, we, we're we doing, uh, uh, in celebration of the radio station, freeworld.fm, Launching, we're going to do a, a, a conference along with it. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about it, Mark. Um, we're doing, uh, it's called Free World NYC. And my good friend, Mr. Uh, Charlie Robinson, Mr. Richard Gage, uh, Don Jeffries, Tony Arterburn, Wayne McCroy, Guard Goldsmith, John Brissom, uh, we're all going to be there. I'm going to be there hosting it. We're going to uh, uh, give talks. And uh, everybody's going to be in the same room together. Tickets are limited. Uh, we try to make them as affordable as possible. Please come support the cause and um, and and join us, man, on September 11th weekend here in New York City. And we can exchange ideas, you know, and uh, and have fun, you know, with like minded people. Listen to your favorite podcaster talk, you know, and and uh, and go from there, you know, and, and they're going to be in a room. Like if you want to talk to Richard Gage about something, he's going to be in a room. You want to talk to Charlie, you go up to Charlie. But like, hey, Charlie, what's up? You know, they're going to be there. So um, come join us. Uh, eventbrite.com. And uh, you check up Free World NYC, and it's it's the first link to come up. It's it, you know it's it's a it's a it's a white picture with a black skyline of New York City. Click on it and uh, come join us. We'd love to see you. Uh, the Infinite Fringe and the Infinite Fringe on Apple Podcast. It's the only places you can find it. It's not on. It's not anywhere else unless that catcher mirrors the Apple feed then you'd be able to get it. But I only put it on Podbeam and on Apple. So that's the only place you can get the Infinite Fringe. I also do a show called America Unplugged every Saturday, 12 p.m. Eastern with Don Jeffries and Tony Ar- Arterburn on Rockfin. Um, and you can find that anywhere. You can you can go on any podcast and find it or AmericaUnplugged.com and live on Rockfin at 12 p.m. Eastern on Saturdays. Uh, wrestling stuff. We got uh, the PW Hustle. Go check that out. That channel is a multimedia channel, man. Um, uh, they do reactions there. Um, we're going to have a couple of other shows launching uh, and wrestling talks. So I do WLR, the Wednesday locker room there on Tuesdays uh, for Hami Media. And we're going to relaunch the PW Hustle show itself there talking about, you know, professional wrestling. Um, so go check that out. Um, beyond that, I don't think I, I don't think I'm missing anything. I hope not anyway. That's all I got. Oh, and freeworld.fm. Go sign up to freeworld.fm. It's a radio station. Everybody that's on um, the panel for Free World NYC 
will ha actively have shows on there amongst uh, like about 35 other hosts um, uh, will be uh, broadcasting out of there in hopes to preserve our free speech since we're being banned all over the place. That's why we created this platform. Um, so, so we can have a home. Uh, so come join us over there. It'll cost you absolutely nothing. And we will be launching before September, Lord willing. That's it. Thank you, Mark. All right, Billy Ray Valentine, thanks so much for coming on my show. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Billy Ray Valentine. I can tell you I certainly did. And that conversation did continue into the smoke-filled room when we discussed a little more of the conspiracy stuff in pro wrestling, including the New World Order. New, 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 new world, new world, new world order. Wrestling fans know what I'm talking about. We go a little deeper. We go off into some wild areas as well. We even talk about moon landing, space stuff. What exactly is going on out there? We get into all of it with Billy Ray Valentine. There are so many ways you can access that premium content. You can do it by subscribing on Rockfin, subscribing to anyone on Rockfin, and you get access to my show, no matter who you subscribe to. You can head over to Subscribestar, where you can also get yourself one free week trial. Isn't that nice? Or you can go over to Patreon, which is the most popular method uh, to receive this content, patreon.com slash Mark Claire show all of the links you need for anything and everything related to this show can be found over at Mark Claire.com M A R C C L A I R.com friends until next week, in case I don't see you good afternoon, good evening and good night.